So I have the image in the background, and I georeference this to my image. You don't georeference the image to to this uh, time map because time map is just a scan or or something hand drawn maybe. Probably is drawn maybe hand drawn. Most likely is. So it's brought in 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 this type of mind as best as you can. It's not going to be super accurate. If you wanted to be really accurate for some surveying purposes, then you get Michael and his team out of the survey class, right? And you guys go out there and survey it by instrument, right? What I'll, uh, all, all I want to do here is draw a polygon as like a placeholder for information. You need, to, you need to take information and you need to add it into some type of polygon. So here's a bucket here. And you'll import the data into this bucket. This one, you can draw another polygon. So then uh, you need to uh, have a layer to drop over the top of it. So we'll use feature class because when we have feature class, we can um, uh, then add certain rules. And the rules are where the parcels cannot overlap and they cannot have any gaps. Those are the two rules. So where's my art catalog? Here it is. And I would always recommend that you place your data in a folder and save it in the same folder so you can always find it. So I know that's my folder right here. If I get lost, I can always, if I get lost, I can always hit this home and it takes me back again. So it's always the best thing to do and, and no spaces in your folder or your file names. Okay, so here's how I make it. I'm going to make a geodatabase really quickly. I'm going to make new. And there's different types of geodatabases, but the one I'm going to make is the file geodatabase. Okay. New file geodatabase. And uh, I give it a name. I'll just call this one lesson 012. Yeah. So there's my lesson geodatabase. Remember, C is the name of the GD. It depends on your computer if you call it you do, do that or not. I prefer to do this. If you do want to see the, 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 the file type, I think it's under Customize ArcMap Options. Probably under here somewhere you can tell it that you want to see the uh, extension on the file name somewhere. I'm not quite sure. It's in there somewhere. Okay. So now I need to make my data set. Now, a lot of people work with geodatabases and they don't have the layer inside of a data set. I always recommend it because it's cleaner. Furthermore, your, when you make a folder uh, in your geodatabase, you specify a projection. So anything in that, that folder is the same projection. And furthermore, that, that folder, you can note on the side, oh, there's some rules for, the, for my data in here. So if you add any rules, then you need to make the geo database. So here I go. I'll make a new and feature data set, right? So there's my geo database. I'll select new feature data set. I think of it like a folder. And I will just call this one um, uh, maybe, maybe um, polygons, just because I can. You can call it anything you want. But then it says, oh, by the way, um, where about in the world are you working? Well, um, I, I'm working in LA County. Well, they say, well, in LA County upstairs, we're using the same projection of California State Plain Zone 5 PP. That's what they're all working on upstairs. Maybe some, maybe, the, maybe there's some other ones that may be working on, but primarily it's State Plain 5. So then I go next and next and finish. So now you can see I do now have my geodatabase. And I have a folder inside called Polygons. You can call it anything you want. I can rename it right now if I want to, but I wouldn't want to rename it later because then it gets confused. It's like taking the door off of your house and putting a different color on there so when you come home, you can't make out, is that my house? A different door in there. So now I'm going to make a, um, a, a layer because I need to draw, I need to take a sheet of paper, lay it on top and start drawing. So I'll make a new layer. Again, I call them layers, but if I want to pass the exam at Esri, I want to make sure when I make this new layer that it's not called a layer, but it's called a feature class. 
So okay, here I go. Right mouse, I'll go new creature class. I'll call this one parcel. And it's a polygon, so I'm going to pick the polygon option, which is the default. Then I go next. I go next. It says, well, what do you want to collect about the parcel? And if I remember, um, I wrote it down. Let's see. And I, I, I need to post this up for you, too. Uh, let me find it on my computer. So one of them is the APN number. So we need to put down what is the APN, Assessor Parcel Number. And the Assessor Parcel Number is um, the, the unique ID, like your social security card number for the parcel. And it's going to be text, because sometimes the APN number will have a dash in there too, so I make it as text. 50 characters should be okay. Now, the next one I'll put down the street number. I'll put down um, ST, maybe S, S, T, N, U, M. And I'll leave it as text, because sometimes I'll put down 10B. And I'll put down street name. Maybe you did it a little differently than mine, that's okay. But I'm just putting down some extra fields. Solar, I want to put down if it has a solar panel. And I'll put down if it has a pool. I guess when you put solar panel down, I think I want it to be where it says yes or no. So maybe I don't really need to put in 50 characters for solar. So I'll put, I'll put down just maybe four characters. And the default value for solar, I'll put down no. And for pool, I'll put down no. And I'll put down to maybe four again. So you, this is a little bit more detail. You don't need to do that. Yes? Where you put a zero one? Yeah. Uh, you can you can create create what's called a domain. So when you when you are drawing something, it drops down a menu. So you can just point to what you want to, and then that could also be assigned a a, a number. Yeah. But I didn't do that for this exercise because I I do it in my other courses. But in this case, I want you to at least have something to type in someplace. So pool, solar, and I O zone. I want to put down if it's residential, if it's commercial. So ideally when I draw a polygon, I'd like to have where it drops down a menu. I'll say commercial, residential, multifamily housing, industrial, but we can type it in. Uh, by default, I guess I could type in residential by default. You don't have to. You can type it in again and again yourself if you want to. And then uh, stories, I'll put down if it's got any story. And I'll give it a, I'll call it stories like this. So you can see what I'm doing. I, I type in the word story and then I'm putting down the alias so that it'll look like, it'll look like the lower word first, but this is just a pure old sort of story. And I also put down maybe the value, if I could figure that out. Value. And I'll put that down as a number. Okay, so APN number, street num. I'm going to call this one street number and street name. I'll give it an alias. You don't have to, but it makes it cleaner. Uh, solar. I put down in parentheses, yes or no. Pool, I'll do that too. Yes or no. So pool, um, pool, yes or no. And I'll put down zoning and stories or floors. I'm not sure if you want to call it floors or not. Okay. So, for example, um, I put down story and I put the alias down as being stories with parentheses floors. But that's just your own story. So you have to be careful. And I put down uh, 50 characters. Really? I think that should be a number. Otherwise, people type something in. 
So I'll say that the story is going to be a double as the number, and the default value will be one, like one story. Okay. So what you see here are what are called the attributes. So when you, when you look at the attribute table, it'll have ATN, it'll have student number, it'll have student name, it'll have store, pool, zone, story, and value. And if you want to write a little poem about each one, like someone who's really mean living there, you can put down a comment here if you want to. There you go. And you can put down 500 characters if you want to. So you can type a little story. So this is everything about the parcel that I'm drawing. So when I draw the polygon, I want to be able to add this information to the polygon. So I'll hit finish. And now you can see over here, there's my geodatabase here. And this is the data set. And then this is the feature class. Okay. So I've made my geodatabases, but there's one thing I want to add. And that is when I'm drawing, I can be a little sloppy, so I want to make sure there's no gaps and there's no overlaps. Otherwise, someone will be calling me back saying, hey, you need to fix this. So quality control is pretty important when you have layers where they shouldn't overlap and you have no overlap. So this is what I had shown you um, in, I think it was lesson 11. You had to right mouse on here and make a new topology. Okay. So what I'm doing, I am adding it to my geo data set. And in the geo data set, I'm going to add a new topology. And if someone says that you work with topology, just keep in mind it's something where you assign rules. So things, for example, a, a water line must not be crossed over by a sewer line. So you can assign those certain rules. So I'll make a new topology, and I'll go next. I'll go next, and I'm going to assign it to the parcel. So my parcel layer will have a topology. I said, what, what are the rules? Well, the rules are no overlap and no gap. So for my layer of parcels, those are the two rules, no gaps, no overlap. And then I hit finish, or next and finish. All right. So I've made my, my feature data set. You can see it right here. So here's my, here's my geo database. Here's my feature data set called polygons. I have parcels in there, and I have some rules in there. So that was lesson 11. So here's lesson 12. And before I start this, I'm going to remove this layer first. From here because I, it, I just I want to add it again and when you add the layer what you should be doing is to take the topology instead and drag it into here so you drag the topology and we'll put anything in there with it that belongs to those rules there you go I'll drag it in now give me an error saying hey well there's nothing in that layer but that's okay okay so now you can see I do have here, there is the layer I generated, and these are, this is the rules, actually be this, this area one on top. So when I draw the parcel, it'll give me the error to say where there's some problems there. Okay, here we go. So digitizing, these are the two tools we work with. If you don't see these tools, like on any program, not just GIS, right, you have to go to customize, go to toolbars, and you can add editor, and then add topology. Those two tools you need to use. There's other tools we can use. For example, one's called Kogo, which allows you to do a lot more detailed digitizing. But for us, for this lesson, just, just basic editor. Okay, so to start drawing, unlike other programs like AutoCAD, you, you can, in AutoCAD, you can start drawing right away. In GIS, for this version at least, uh, you have to specify, I want to start editing. So I go to Editor, and I start editing. Because notice, so none of these tools here are available for you because you need to start editing. There you go, start editing. 
and now I have all these tools available for me. So this one is where you draw the features. This one is where you check for the errors. Okay, so I picked an area that Michael had an issue with some curvatures in this map. So uh, I picked one which has some, some curves on here. So I was going to show you the long way to do this, but because um, to make it easier for me to, I'll show you the easy way. Okay? But there's long way and there's an easy way. Um, so I'll do the easy way, but then I'm going to make an error so that you can see how to fix it, how I fix it. Here's the easy way to do it. Why not draw the whole bloody thing thing first and then cut it up? And then there's no gaps at all, right? The long way to do it would be for you to draw each one, one at a time, where you say, well, uh, here is one right here, here's another one right there, and by, by uh, I mean, it's very hard to avoid any over overlaps or gaps, so it's, I would recommend doing it this way instead. I want to start editing. Here you can see at the end, create feature. This shows up on the right, over there, and you, I would grab the parcel and start drawing. There I go. I'm going to grab my parcel. I start at this corner, I go to maybe this corner, I'm going to come down, I'm going to come over here, I come back to here. So notice in this, in this example that there is a curve around here. So the best way to do the curve is if you go to the edge before it starts to turn, you, you point at the edge of the curve. And then you pick the curve tool, which is right here. That's the curve tool. And I pick at the end of the curve, and I pick at the middle of the curve. And then I go back to line. There. Now I'm going to go to here, and I can see there's a large curve right here. So what we do is I first pick the end of the curve, then I pick the middle of the curve, right? Here we go. So I pick curve, I pick the end of the curve, then I pick at the middle of the curve right here. So there's a nice curve. It's not super accurate, but it, like again, if you want it to be super accurate, which they do have upstairs for areas where they need to put in a survey grade. But for right now, we just need to have these, these placements of polygons for information to be added. When I pan on the screen, I actually, I'm not sure if you know how to do that, but there's a C, the letter C on the keyboard changes my, my glove, uh, my, my crossing, crossing right there, here. I'll change this crossing to a glove. Here I go. That enables me to pan easy. Here we go. So it looks like you come back to a line, to here, and then I'm going to come back to this curve. Now there's another curve. And I can pick, again, the end of the curve. I pick the middle of the curve. Then I get back to the line. There we go. Then there's another curve. I start at the beginning of the curve. Pick the arc. Pick the end of the curve. Pick the middle of the curve. Then I go back to the line. And it looks like I don't need to add any more because it's automatically ended because of the polygon. It's like an AutoCAD when you do a polygon, uh, a P-line, you can go close, and go close, and go close. So by default, I started here, and I don't really need to trace back there again before it started. So then I can just hit F2 on the keyboard. F2, there, now it's done. So there's one big piece. I'll zoom back out here. But in order to cut this, I need to see underneath it. So the best thing to do is make it transparent. So I'll say that this is maybe 30% transparent, maybe. And I think the symbology should be like a thick outline because I won't be able to see where I'm drawing. So make like a thick outline. I would not make the outline red because we're using red here for where there's an error. So I wouldn't use red. Gray is probably fine. And then I uh, hit OK and OK. I'm going to turn my image off too because that's a little too busy. <coughs> so now I can see where I need to cut. This is one parcel, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten parcels. Okay. So the best thing to do at this point is 
Think of it as a piece of paper. You're going to cut through it like a, like a paper cutter. You start on one side of the fence, you end on the other side of the fence. Right? You, don't, you don't stay short of the fence because they need to pull it apart and it gets messy. So where's my, my cutter? It's right here. Cut polygon. So um, you'll see, I'm going to try to pick this. Here we go. Cut polygon. And it says there's an error. And the error is, hey, I can't cut anything unless you pick something. So I have to pick it first. So, okay, where's the selection? I guess I pick this. Now it's highlighted. We can see it's blue around the edge. So now I can cut it. And again, I start outside the fence. So I'll start up here. And then uh, I'll end over here. And you don't have to put it down. You don't have to try to get it exactly like this slowly. I'll show how I would do it. I just pick at the top here. And then I can just move it. Try to get it to be aligned. I don't have to follow down exactly. I just get the line down to the bottom. And then I align it like this. And it looks like I'm about, nope, I need to come up here a bit. And come back down again. So it looks like it lined up pretty well. So I, I click and then F2. Now it's broken up into two pieces. Now I can do the same thing for this. I can cut here to there. And then that will be one. Right now, there's two polygons. One polygon, two polygons. So to cut it, I just start here. I double click over here or F2. That's now three polygons. I'll go here. I'll double click instead. You can use F2 or double click. So now there's four polygons. Now I'm going to try to cut this one here, but notice it's going to give me an error. It says I can't because nothing's selected. Oops, I forgot. Yes, I need to pick this first. And now I can cut it. So I'll start here. I'll end over here. Double click. There's another one. Double click. There's another one. Double click. Go from this corner. Double click. I'll go from here to, I guess, here. Double click. And I'll start from here and down here. Double click. Now, there are no errors anywhere on here because when I cut it, there's no gaps at all. There's no overlaps. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to I'm going to force myself to have an error over here. So maybe I'm going to do this one over here. So to start again, I have to go back to where it says my parcel. So I grab it. I'm going to start right here. I'm going to go to here. I'll go to here and here. Now I'm going to do an arc. Pick the end, pick in the middle, pick a line, double click. Then I'm going to do another one. I purposely made an error. <laughs> and now I'll do an arc. Click at the end, click here. And then uh, I'll uh, draw a line and now there. So what I've done, I've purposely made some errors here. So how can I tell whether there's any, any errors? Well, that's the topology tool. So topology will, will, sh will highlight those areas in red for you. So here I go. So it's these two tools here allow you to check for the errors. And the one next to it I should zoom in closer. Yeah. So this, this allows you to, to check for errors all the map, all the polygon. The one here allows you to check only those that are selected, and then the white arrow allows you to fix it. So those primarily those two tools will be fine. So I'll check for errors. Check. Oh, where check. So there's some errors in here. And disregard that the outside here is also red, because I'm not sure why they have it red, but that's there is an error up here, I can see. This one should actually be moved over here, but disregard the fact it's red on the outside. So how could I get this to be moved over to the corner? Well, one way to do this is you take your editor toolbar, and I'm not sure what this guy looks to, looks like for you, but for this here, it looks like it's a, one of those Star Trek badges that you know on Star Trek, they have a little badge on them. That one there allows you to Double click on this, and then there's a grip. It's pretty hard to see, but there's a green square there. 
and I can grab that grip and I can move it over to this location. So I fixed the corner. Zoom previous. But that still didn't fix the errors down here. Check for errors again. Yep. So I have a couple of errors down here. This one here looks like it's going to be an overlap. And this one here is going to be a gap. So there's two problems I can, I can see. If you want to see what they are, to be sure, I could pick this tool here. And I can right click on the feature that's in red, and it should tell me if I tell it to show the rule. Tell me what the rule, what the rule description is for this problem. And it's telling me, oh, uh, you told me to tell me that if there is any overlap to alert me and highlight in red. So this is saying, yep, you have an error. It's it's overlap. So how can I fix this? Well, if you right click on it, here's your options. And the option we're going to use is merge. So we're going to merge that red overlap with this side, I think. No, I think it's on this side. So we're going to merge it on here. Okay. So if I right mouse on here, I'll go merge to which one? This one or this one? I'll say to that one. So that's fixed. And then I'm going to check for errors again. Oh, this has an error. It looks like there's a gap. If I right click on the edge of this show rule, it says, sure enough, you must have no gap. Okay, well, fine. So how, how do I fix this? I right click, and when I, when I fill gaps, I create a feature. It's like spackling. You have a hole in the wall, you spackle it up, right? Here we go. Right click, create feature. So now I have A, B, and then there's this piece over here. Where does that go? So I'm going to tell that this piece here needs to go to here. And the tool to do that is called Merge. I'm going to merge this piece here to B. Here we go. And I first have to pick them both. So they're both highlighted, two of them. I can tell the highlighted because down here it says a two. So there's this one highlighted and this one highlighted. So I'm going to, I'm going to combine this with this. And the tool I'm using is merge. So this is going to be merged with this. So well, this one or this one? This one or this one? This one. Yeah. So now that's merged. Go back out again. I'm going to check for some errors. Oops. I can see that there's a few errors. There's an error right here. There's an error here. And there's an error down here. So you would not be able to pick those errors up pretty easy. If you had, here's a thousand error parcels, fix the problems or determine how many errors there are. You could find the errors right here, I think. Can I check? Can I check for errors? Um, errors from rules. Yeah, I thought I could check for errors here. I don't see the option to do that, but it should, I should be able to determine how many errors are there. Because what you could do then, if you get some data from maybe China or Pakistan where the city sent it out, you could do a quality inspection um, and see how many errors there are. If there's maybe 5 10% error, you send it back, or maybe 5% or less. So I can see that there's an error right here. So I'm going to right click on here. Um, this one's going to be merged with this one. That's fixed. Now, there's a, this looks like it's going to be a gap or an overlap. It's an overlap. So I think that I'm going to merge it with probably this one over here. So I'm going to take this and merge it to here. So right click, merge with that one. Okay, zoom previous. So there's one more error in here, and I can see it. It's probably a gap, which it looks like it is. Okay, zoom in. There's the gap. And the gap is how wide. Let's see how wide that gap is so you can I can get a sense of scale here in feet. So from here to there, it's a half a foot. Or one third of so it's uh, maybe three or four inches, not very big, but it's a gap.
So I need to fix it. So to fix it, I go to my topology tool right here. I'm going to fix that gap here. I right click on here and I'm going to create a feature. If I zoom in real close, you can see now that there's a polygon, like it's been spackled up here. So here's A, here's B. So then the question is, what do I do with this one right here? This is a, 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 a like a spackle, right? So I need to then take this one, maybe move it here or move it to this one. I don't know. Let's see. I'll turn on this map I did. I think I'm going to merge it with this one over here because it's mostly on that side. Let's see. Where is the tool? I'm going to take these two. So I can see down below it says, it says two. So this piece here and this piece over here. Those two have been put into one piece. There you go. Editor, merge. There you go. I'll zoom back out again. Okay, are there any more errors? Let's take a look. I don't see any more errors on here. If there were any errors, it would be in red. Right now, all I see is red on the outside. And that's what it is. It's been gone. I'll show you a few tricks. So this place down here, maybe I forgot to do this place. And I could go over, yeah, so here's, here's one way that most people do it, and I would not do it this way. You create a feature, you start here, you go to here, you go to this, uh, I'll do a curve. And I go back to a line, looks like. And I come here, and I come back to there. So I drew a polygon tracing the wall on the inside and the curve on the outside. But an easy way to do it is this way. I would instead use, where is it? Oh, editor, more editing tools, advanced editing. Is that it? Let me see which tool is it. Uh, huh. Where is this tool? More editing tools. Autocomplete. Where's my autocomplete? Trace. Oh, here it is. So when, when you draw features, it gives you some tools to pick. So if, if I'm drawing a parcel, I can go to the polygon, I can do it to left hand, or to circle, or to left, or freehand, which is kind of awkward in matter of ten. So you can also do order complete, which is actually pretty nice. But that one will save a lot of, a lot of problems. So here's order complete. I pick polygon, I pick order complete. I'm going to start on the inside of the parcel over here. I'll start here. I'll click to this location. I'll click along here, and it'll end over here and I'll just fill in the gap behind it. Here we go, so I'll go to here, I go to this location, I'm gonna do the arc, I'll go back to line, I'll go back to here, and I just hit F2 to finish. So all I've done is from here, and when I hit F2, or, or just right click finish, sketch, um, it's going to automatically add this portion right here for me without any gaps there. So there's no gaps at all. And if you accidentally move it like this, it's really hard to get it back exactly. I would always use an undo to bring it back to where it's supposed to. Okay. If you try to put it back manually yourself, you'll never get it back exactly the same way. So I would, I would undo it, undo it, undo it, undo it, there. Or draw it again, delete it and draw it again. Okay, so my, for my uh, area, I probably draw all of these parcels, right? So you may have, maybe you'll have a dozen parcels, maybe you'll have 20. But again, it's, it's once you get, um, uh, do a few of them, it's pretty easy. Like, I pick here, I'll go to the end of this, I'll go to the end of here, I'll go to here. Again, you don't need to be super accurate. 
Uh, I'll click arc, come back to here, go back to line. There's an arc right here. Click the end of the arc, I think, somewhere here. And then go back to line. And then uh, to the end. So I'll do an arc. Then F2. So there's my, um, there's my polygon. And now I can just cut it. Here we go. One. So once you draw the polygon, so it, then you have to add some data. So um, fortunately, when I made my geodatabase, I gave it a default. So all of these are called residential. Unless it's commercial, I can change it. But they're all, they're all residential. OK. I won't do them all, but I'll just do these last few. OK. So uh, I could do check for errors, but there's no errors. Yeah, no errors, because I just cut them off. OK, so uh, if, I, if I wanted to save my work, either you can stop editing and save changes, or you can hit Save Edits, either way. I'll just hit Save Edits. So if my computer crashes, I've saved it. OK, so now notice how many, how many pulses are there. Um, I can just simply open up the attribute table, and it tells me that there's 28 parcels. Because remember in GIS, if you remember at the beginning of the semester, that what you see here is the geography, and this is the information here, and then the system is putting them together, right? So when you draw these, you automatically be able to put them on here. And then you add information for these. So the first one over here, that one is this, and notice uh, the APN number is missing, the street number is missing, the street name is missing. They all know for solar, they all know for pool, they're all residential, stories are one. I don't know if it has any solar panels. Easy, turn this on, and I can zoom in, and I can see solar panels, maybe I make it even lighter, not color. Solar panel, solar panel, solar panel, no solar panels? No solar panel. Oh, mm. I don't know. It doesn't look like a solar panel. Um, go across the street. Any solar panels? Um, I don't. Oh, there's a solar panel. So on this one, I'll put yes. <laughs> so when when you type the information in, or when you draw a feature, it's drawn with this tool. When you want to add the attributes, it's it's added with this tool. So or you can or you can right click on the feature and say attributes or to select attributes. See, if I right click on here, I go to attributes, and then this one is soul. I'm gonna put down yes, and they're all residential. Uh, any pools? This one has a pool, so I'll put down pool. I'll put down yes, because all of mine have no. So I, anywhere there's a pool, I'll change the no to yes. And oh, there's two more. This one's empty. This pool. And this one is also a pool. Uh, there was a project one time, they flew the whole county of LA with Lariac, actually, so they have the imagery available. Um, but they determined the, the, the average shape of pool in LA County, LA City, it was LA City. What is the average shape of pool in LA City? They used GIS to determine, the, get the image. They pulled out all the pools based on remote sensing and then it generated a, a shape for the uh, for the pool, and then it determined what is the average shape. Does anyone know what the average shape would be for pools? It's a kidney bean shape. That's the average shape. So this one will be, uh, both of these I'll have yes for a pool. And oh, there's another pool here. So what you do for this exercise is you are to draw the parcels and add in information. So I'd have to add for all these four parcels, one, two, three, four, five, six parcels, what is the street name? How do I know what the street name is? Well, it's on here. This is a Utah court. I know you guys like to do things the long way. Here's the way I would do it. 
I've picked them all, right? And here they all are over here. If you can't see this on the right, I'll do it again. I right click on any of these, I bring up the attributes, and here they are. So there's, here's all the parcels I just, I, I selected. So if I pick the top one, that, that serves for all of them. Or you can do one at a time. I'll pick the top one. And notice that the street name in here is null. So I'm gonna put down, street name is Utah Court, U-T-A-H-C-T, -T. enter. And now they're all with the name Utah Court. But now the problem is, I don't know what the name of this, what, what the address is for these. And the best way to do it is Assessor website. Yeah, I think it's Assessor website. Mm -hmm. So you will have to go into Assessor website or go down to Street View. And if I go down to Street View, I could probably figure the name of these out too. But Assessor place would be probably better. Okay, so all of these are probably, these look like, uh, Sycamore Avenue. So I'll pick all these three and I'll put this down as Sycamore Avenue. There. Okay. And all of these are going to be probably a Victoria place. So it's a quick way of, of, of labeling these. All right, so uh, if I was to point to one of these, notice that it brings up all the information. There it is, so this one, bring it down here so you can see it easier. Yeah, so that one right here I just selected is this information. So that one parcel is Assess a website. The value would be the, the, the ground, the land property, and the structures built on top, added together. They may not be the value of what it is today because maybe the last time they assessed was back in 1970. So it may, it may say it's $45,000 for the whole property that you're building. So these here are the attributes of those parcels. So um, there's a little work to do, but um, by the time you finish drawing these features, adding the attributes, checking for errors, then on that resume, when they say, are you familiar with digitizing? Are you familiar with quality control, topology? That's what this is. Question, Josh. Well, if, I, if you gave me a, a thousand parcels, uh, and if you didn't have, let's say you give it to me as a shape file, I'd have to bring it into GIS, I'd have to make my own geodatabase, I'd have to make my, make my own rules, I import your shape files into the geodatabase, into that data set, then I take check for rules. And when you check for rules, you get this option here, which gives you a table. So you can see how many how many errors there are. And so maybe you divide the number of errors by how many parcels or something, right? So you, you have to come up with some type of value. And if there's a lot of rules, I mean, I'd say, you know what, let's send it back to Pakistan and have them fix it, and then we'll, we'll get it back again, we'll check it. Yeah. There's, there's very often I have uh, seen um, where parcels are overlapped, and, and they're, I'll get mentioned there probably are some overlap, but these ones overlap where, where ugly overlaps. I mean, they're not, they were not even lined up with each other. It's like, it's like a bunch of cards, just not, sh just unshuffled. Okay. So I could label these, although if when you do it, what I would, what I'd like you to do, if you have commercial and residential, change the color to reflect where this is commercial. So for example, if, if some of these were commercial, I, I'll label these as being commercial, for example. Actually, I'll do these as commercial. And I know that uh, 
Maggie had this had this issue where she had to split into three pieces. So maybe there's two pieces. Maybe this one and this one are two together. And then that's four. So maybe there's an error at one point that I had. And often when you see parcels are are recently combined, uh, they will have a like a, a line that looks something like this to show that they are connected. Mine do not. But let's say that they are. What I would do then is I pick both of these two, <coughs> and on an, on the editor I can then merge them together to where they're into one, like that. So now I have one and two. Maybe this one is a maybe this one's a park, and maybe this one's a Seven Eleven. So what I'll do is I'll pick this one, and I'll go to attributes, and I'm going to change from residential to be uh, maybe um, open space. And I'll make this one to be commercial. So at some point when you're done, I would like you to change the colors like you've done in lesson five, I think it is, where you change, them, change the colors based on a category. And the category would be maybe the, um, the zoning. And you can add all the zoning types, and there's three types for me. For most people, it'll be just residential. You don't, if you don't put the language in, maybe you want to pick, change the colors to be where they have solar or not. So maybe solar panels, the parcel with solar panel will be one color. Those parcels with no solar panel will be a different color. So here's my, uh, there's my parcels. And uh, I think commercial is red. <coughs> and open space will be a green. And residential will be a yellow. Right? And I think I'll change the outline to be a little bit thicker, like maybe um, like a black, maybe a black outline. Yeah. Okay. So when you take the image, you bring it into your references, get it lined up, make the geo database, and then draw the polygons on that image. So if you have 20 parcels, draw the 20 parcels. If you have a thousand parcels, maybe pick a different image. Um, if, your parcel, if your image you download are on two pieces, then um, pick one of them because they may have broken them into two pieces to fit on a sheet of paper. And a lot of these are drawn by hand. Okay, and then I guess I could label my parcels uh, with the APN number, but I don't have the APN number in here. But um, when you do get your label, when you do get your parcel numbers in here, I would like you to type in what the parcel, they call it parcel number, but it's not really a number, it's a parcel letter. Like often people say, what's your zip code number? Well, you can tell them, hey, it's not a number. A zip code is not a number, it's actually text. Right? People think you're really smart then. So these are not really parcel numbers, these are parcel IDs. Assess the parcel number. So you can label it with, or maybe have it go this direction instead, right? So once I'm, I'm done with, with drawing these, I have to stop editing and save edits. Otherwise, I could accidentally crash the computer and I can lose all my work. You can save edits, then stop editing? If you stop editing and you haven't saved, it'll ask you if you want to save. It'll, okay. give, you that, it'll give you that warning saying, are you sure? Save, I'll see you. So I, I, I try to get it out of saving and then stop. Now, sometimes you just want to save edits so they can continue. If you do the op other option, you have to stop editing and then come back and edit edit section uh, session again. Yeah. So I'm trying to think what else about digitizing. Hmm. So what would a deliverable be for this? Well, your deliverable would be a layout. The layout I would add your parcel map in the back, maybe the image. You can be here without doing it. of what you have, color to show maybe if, where the solar panel or there's not, or if it's residential or if it's commercial, if you have that, and label them, and then make your layout. In this case, my layout will be landscape. Yours may be portrait, depending on how yours is, as far as orientated. So that's one deliverable. Right? So one deliverable would be the PDF. 
then the second deliverable I would like you to give to me is the um, parcel layer, the parcel layer you drew, and the parcel map that you georeferenced those two. So in a office, someone may say, hey, um, can you give me that layer that you drew? Well, how can I give it to you? Well, here's what you do. You take those two layers, and I, I pick my control key so I can see them both. So they're both selected. And then if you right mouse on here, if you right, if you right mouse on here, then you can create what's called an LPK file. That's the layer package. So it's where you take features in your layer, layers, you pick layers in your map, uh, arc map, you select them both, and then you right click and create a layer package. What it does, it brings all the associated files into one the LPK file, and the colors are saved, the labels are saved, everything's saved, transparency, and then you provide it just one point. That LPK file, when you open it, it looks exactly the same as you had it. Okay? Otherwise, you'll add it to the map, you'll have to change the colors, when you create the LPK file, the, they receive it, open it up, it looks exactly the same as you, but it has to be, they have to know GIS to open it up. When you click on it, it automatically opens up an arc map. So I'll make a layer package. I pick these two features, this one, this one. I right click, I create a layer package. It's different than a map package. I always give you map packages in previous lessons because it includes the layout, the north arrow, the scale bar, the legend. The layer package only includes the layers that you want. It may ask you to put a summary in here. I'll put down um, lesson 01 to um, uh, digitizing topology. And then uh, I will put the same in for the description. I'll just copy paste. And then for a tag, I'll put down SpongeBob. And then I'll put down Topology. And I'll put down Digitize. And maybe GIS 120. And then I'm going to check to see if there's any more errors. So I can check Analyze. Any errors? Oh, it still has a problem. It wants me to add a description. Double click. OK, I thought I did that. Hit OK, check for problem. It wants another description. Okay, check in. So now there's no problem. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to save it to my local drive. You should put it up online, which may be a good thing anyway. You know, put your work up on your mail package, up online, or as a layer package. But that's what I want you to give me right here. The LPK file. So save it to your desktop and then upload it to Canvas. So the two things that my online Canvas can receive from me. PDF and LPK file, those two things. Josh? When you share a, a layer package or a map package, does it include the topology? So like if you're giving it to someone in May, are they going to add some additional information? Uh, I don't know, but that's a good thing. I should sit down and try that. It'd probably take me like five minutes just to check it out, but yes, that's a good point. Uh, it'd be ideal if it included the geodatabase I don't know if the layer package would because you may have in your geodatabase like 50 layers. So I'm not sure I would give you the whole thing. If I was going to take a layer package, I mean the whole thing with me, I'd take the whole folder with me. So I'd go to my GIS folder, lesson 12, and I'd take, I'd take the whole lesson 12 folder, take that with me. And then uh, I'll just hit share. And so now it's generating onto my lesson 12 folder. It's a, um, a layer package, if I look in here. And layer package, GIS, lesson 12. Is it, there it is. So you know what I'm gonna do, um, Josh? I'm gonna actually delete. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete everything. I'm gonna go to the catalog, I'm gonna test what you mentioned. I'm gonna actually gonna delete all the work I did. And once I delete it in ArcMap, is there is no undo. So I am just deleting everything.
Okay. So delete. Just just remove it. Actually, I'm going to close arc map. Don't even save it. I'm going to forcibly delete it. Delete. Okay. Try again. When do you let me delete again? F F five. So I'm trying to delete it. Oh, now it's gone. So now, and I, I'll even go to my recycle bin and then empty it. So now it's there's all my work gone, but my lay package is still there. So I'm going to test it. Let's see what pops out. The layer will certainly appear up here. The future class, sorry. The future class will, will still appear, but the geodatabase, I'm not quite sure. Okay. Let's see where it went. Arc maps opened. Oops, it wants me to do something. Cancel that. So my layers were saved. There they are. And where did it put my data? I need to check. It placed it under some temporary folder. S uh, oh, a big, long, ugly folder name. Okay. So it placed it under um, here on the GIS on this long, bloody folder name. And where's the GIS? Oh, 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 yes. So there it is. So it did give me the geodatabase and the future data set and the parcel future class, but there's no, there's no topology. But that's easy. I just go to my future data set. I'll go um, new topology, next, next, ne oh, check this. Here, I'll go next, next. I'll add a rule, okay, that's fine. And add another rule, um, uh, no, no gap, okay, next and finish. Now I'm back again. Yeah, so now I'm back to where I was. Very good. Easy stuff. I think it's bloody easy. <laughs>